Hey, I'm Max, and recently I've been researching and making an AI that uses a neural network with the goal of applying it to a game. In my past two videos on this subject, I managed to make my neural network and use it to make the AI learn to play a Flappy Bird game. However, that game is very simple and easy, so I could have easily coded an AI directly to play the game. Today I want to make the AI learn to play a more complex game, and I want to play against it as it learns. I think this would be interesting as a way to make an AI stay at the level of the player so the player always has a challenge but never an AI that's too easy or too hard. First I had to make the game. I decided to make the game about a virus that eats bacteria, red blood cells and other viruses to grow. So first I made the player movement. Then I added bacteria to eat and grow. I also had to make the camera grow with the player. Next I added red blood cells that move around so they are harder to collect but they make you grow more than bacteria. So I hope that the AI will learn to prioritize them. Then I added white blood cells that make the virus grow insanely large. Oops, I mean shrink down the virus. So the AI will need to learn to avoid those. Finally, I added other viruses, currently only with random movement. When two viruses overlap, the biggest one eats the smallest one and grows. The AI will need to learn to chase smaller viruses but run away from bigger ones. Okay, so the game is done. The AI will need to learn to do four tasks at once. Eat red cells, eat smaller viruses, run away from white cell, run away from bigger viruses. I wonder if it can do all that. For now, I will give the AI as inputs the position and mass of the closest virus and white cell, as well as its own position and mass. Okay, let's run it and see what the AI does. And yeah, of course it didn't work on the first try. The AI always goes to the edge of the map and stays there. No matter what I do and how much I train them, they always end up going to the edge. I added as input the position of the nearest red cell as well, hoping that they would chase them. And a few AI seemed to want to get them, but they were not actively chasing them. So they were not growing much and then losing the game, meaning the next generation didn't want to try that again. So I was kinda stuck. After a few generations, I finally had some that were chasing red cells and running away from bigger viruses near them. But it was still not very good and they would still end up going to the edges. So I made viruses lose mass when they are at the edges hoping to discourage that behavior, and well, it worked, kinda. The AI simply learned that when it reaches that point, it has to back off or stop moving. So it stopped them from just blindly going in one direction all of the time, but they still seem to be afraid of everything. They even run away from red cells and smaller viruses. So let me try to play with them and see if they end up learning. They actually ended up learning pretty well, but they still struggled with getting the red cells. After a bit more training, they got good at getting the red cells and smaller enemies, but they were still very far from perfect. I could win every game easily. After even more training, they got very good at getting red cells, but somehow small viruses went after big ones and big ones ran away from small ones. It's kind of funny when you think about it because the AI kind of acts like a real virus by creating mutations of itself. And if that mutation does better, it takes over. So after a few mutations, they seem to understand everything except that when the other viruses are smaller, you can eat them. When I play against them, they definitely got better, but it's still an easy win for me. I tried to change every setting to make them learn to attack smaller enemies, but they never did. I started thinking maybe the size of the map and the amount of enemies was too small, making luck a large factor. So I decided to enlarge the map by around 5 times and try again. Unfortunately, that didn't help. So I had an idea. I decided to try to implement a reward system. I feel like the reward system helped it learn what not to do fast, but it still didn't seem to understand what to do and it seemed very scared of everything because the reward system punished them if they died. So they just tried to survive and they didn't really bother trying to grow. After thinking about these issues and researching, I realized that the system I needed wasn't exactly a reward system, but a fitness system. An AI's fitness can grow when they gain mass and get reduced when they lose mass. 
I can even make the fitness go down faster than up so losing mass is punished even more than gaining it. Then I can pick the one in the generation with the highest fitness at the end of the game instead of the last one alive. So even if one manages to be the last one alive, if he didn't get any mass while he was alive, he won't be picked for the next round. Also, I can try to implement the NEAT algorithm. NEAT stands for Neuro Evolution of Augmenting Topology. So I guess those are kind of big words, but it pretty much means that the network structure will evolve as the network is trained. So neurons and connections will be added as the training goes on. This is useful because the structure of a network affects a lot its performance. Right now I have to set manually the structure of the network, but it's hard for me to just guess what will work. Also, in a basic neural network, every neuron is linked to every neuron of the next layer. However, we don't necessarily want that. For example, the position of the nearest blood cell and the position of the nearest white cell are two neurons, but they shouldn't be linked together because they have no connection with each other. So, having them connect to the same neurons in my network makes no sense. The NEAT system can produce a good structure without needing my help, and it can also create a sort of non-linear structure where not everything is connected, and some parts may have more neurons than others. Okay, well that sounds good and all, but how do I do that? I've never coded anything like that. Turns out, as someone pointed out in my comments, I could use the Unity ML agent to do it for me. But that's no fun, I actually want to try coding it myself. So I did a lot of research, wrote notes, and then started smashing my keyboard, trying to do it. The problem is that most of the resources and tutorials online about NEAT uses libraries or don't do it the way I want to do it. So I have to try to understand the idea of it and try to come up with a code completely by myself. First, I had to restructure the code of my neural network to use nodes and connections. The code I had up until now simply had arrays of weights on every layer and every layer was sent as the input to the next layer. Now each layer has an array of nodes and nodes have an array of connections and this is how the input is going to be calculated now. I thought since that would reduce the amount of operations a lot, the result will be terrible until I actually implemented the NEAT system. But surprisingly, there was a huge improvement just from this. My AIs were no longer moving straight to the edges for multiple generations in a row. On the first generation, they were already starting to move around. So apparently, the basic neural network had too many useless connections, and that turned out to be bad. And apparently, removing those connections somehow helped. Either that or I messed everything up. But of course, with only 22 connections, the network is not able to improve much. So next, I started testing my connections to make sure everything worked before trying to implement NEAT. Before this remake of my network, my network looked like this. The size was set by me and stayed constant. Also, you can see each neuron is linked with all of the others. Now, I made a display for my network for the sake of this video and to make sure everything works. You can see that I have a similar setup now. Every neuron is connected to every neuron of the next layer, creating a huge mess. Now, if I go back to the basic 22 connections network with only input and output, it is a lot less messy. But the AI is very bad. Now it's time to apply the NEAT system. I spent a few hours smashing my keyboard and scratching my head. This was actually very difficult to do. I pretty much did it all by myself because I could only find text explaining how it's done and no code at all. So like I said, the NEAT system creates connections and neurons. Thanks to my visualizer, you can now see the neurons and connections on the screen. And it will show the best AI from the previous round. I set the chance of creating a new neuron very high just to show how it works but obviously it won't create that many that fast. So you can see new neurons getting created every round. Next, I made it create new connections and also change the colors to now show the weights and biases of the network. The greener a node is, the lower its bias, the wider a line is, the higher its weight. Now let's look at the results. Wow, that's amazing. You can see the network slowly add neurons and connections as well as the biases and weights change. 
I had to spend a few hours fixing the way neurons activate in the code now that we have custom connections. But once that was done, you can see our AI kinda learns just like before. Now it is time to see if Neat can create something amazing. Ok, so it takes quite a lot of time, but eventually new layers are created and the behavior of the AI gets better. The main problem we faced before Neat was that the AI often gets scared and stuck in places. Let's let it train a bit and see if we still have that. And after only a few minutes of training, we already have some AIs that are very aggressive and chasing others. The games don't last very long, unlike before when two AIs were scared of each other, so the game kept getting stuck. Let's try increasing the map size and enemy count again to see what happens. With a bigger map, each game takes longer so the training takes more time, but luck is less involved so the results are better. Anyway, after a whole hour of training, the result was good but not amazing yet. I'm sure if I let it train for a while longer it would be better, but I remembered I didn't finish the knee system exactly. I still take the last alive of the generation to breed for the next generation, but the knee system uses fitness. Like I said earlier, with fitness I can punish bad behaviors by removing fitness. I can also remove fitness for the time spent not doing anything to punish the AIs that are too careful and avoid everything. I did that and let it train for a bit again. I finally started seeing a lot of aggressive AIs chasing the smaller ones, but somehow the AI had a tendency to go to the upright corner. I thought it might be behavior saved from the previous attempts, so I decided to retrain it from zero and see. After only 20 minutes of training and only one neuron created, it was already pretty good. I guess the fitness system helped a lot more than the neat neurons creations. But after 45 minutes it has somehow gotten worse. I'm pretty sure that's because I didn't implement yet the species part of the neat algorithm. That means if a bad mutation gets saved by luck, we are stuck with it forever. So I could implement the species part of the neat algorithm which separate each mutation to give them each a try for a while instead of just saving one and if it's bad well you're stuck with it now. But instead I decided to just change settings and stop training before it went bad. Once I felt it was good enough I stopped the training and I tried playing against it again. We can see that the AI tends to run away from me when I'm bigger than them. You can also see them chase after me when they're bigger sometimes. Now I can make it so as the player plays, the AI keeps training and evolving to become better over time. You can see that if I do that, on the first launch of the game, the enemies are terrible, but after a while playing, the enemies become smart. I could even pick the AI with the fitness closest to the player's fitness instead of the best overall at the end of the round. So the AI stays at a level near the player. If the player does bad, the AI becomes worse for the next game, and if the player wins, then the AI becomes better for the next game. But at the end of the day, what makes a neural network so cool for games is how it creates an unpredictable behavior. I could pretty easily hard code an AI for this game by doing something like if the other is bigger, run away, else run to it. But that would be predictable, and also the enemies would be very scripted and not feel natural at all. It would also be very difficult to create different difficulty levels. Using a neural network makes the enemies sometimes hesitate, sometimes make a bad move, and that makes the AI feel more human and gives the player a chance to win in a natural way. I've been playing with neural networks for a bit now and I've been fascinated by what it did. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did make sure to like and subscribe.